mum Julie. Hello, I'm Lucy's mum. And welcome to A Brief History of Tea in Britain. Every UK citizen consumes an average of two kilograms of tea a year. But where did this love of tea come from? That's what we'll be briefly exploring today. Fancy a cuppa? Go on then. Shall I be mother? The story begins in China, where tea drinking had been popular for many centuries before it had been heard of in the West. There, containers for tea have been found in tombs dating from 206 BC. It is likely that the East India Company first brought tea to Britain. It was very expensive and only intended for the rich, so much so that it was often kept under lock and key. In the mid 1600s, tea was retailing at £10 a pound, or £22 a kilogram, roughly £2,000 in today's money. The tradition of drinking tea was introduced to the royal court by Catherine of Braganza. Catherine had grown up drinking tea as her preferred everyday beverage, and when she arrived from Portugal to marry Charles II in 1662, it is said she brought a casket of tea with her. Catherine's fondness of tea quickly made it fashionable in England, and the ladies of the court developed a liking for the elegant drink. In 1717, Thomas Twining opened the first tea shop for ladies, and slowly tea shops began to appear throughout England, making tea drinking accessible to everyone. The shop is still open today. The concept of tea shops quickly spread throughout Britain, not least because they provided a place where unchaperoned women could socialise and meet friends without damage to their reputation. Another one of the first coffee house merchants to offer tea was Thomas Garway. Garway, known as a tobacconist and coffee man, owned an establishment in Exchange Alley in London. He was serving dry and liquid tea to the public as early as 1657. He issued a broadsheet advertising tea at six and ten pounds per pound, describing tea's amazing properties. Among the virtues mentioned were making the body active and lusty, and preserving perfect health into old age. I think I'm just going to take another sip. <laughs> Tea's popularity grew quickly. By 1700, over 500 coffee houses sold tea, and by 1750, tea had become the favoured drink in Britain. This upset the tavern owners, because tea's popularity cut their sales of ale and gin. It was also bad news for the government, who depended upon the revenue from taxes on alcohol. Charles II attempted to counter the growth of tea's popularity with several acts forbidding its sale in private houses. This was so unpopular that it was impossible to enforce. A 1676 Act taxed tea and required coffee house operators to apply for a licence. This was just the beginning. The government's attempts to control and profit from the popularity of tea resulted in the duty of the drink reaching an absurd 119% by the mid-18th century. This heavy taxation had the effect of creating a whole new industry. Tea smuggling. Ships from Holland and Scandinavia brought tea to the British coast. Then stood offshore while smugglers met them and unloaded the precious cargo in small vessels. The smugglers were often local fishermen. They snuck the tea in through underground passageways and pathways. They stashed it in special hiding places, one of which was the local parish church. In 1784, William Pitt the Younger acted on the advice of Richard Twining of the Twining Tea Company and finally dropped the tax on tea from 119% to 12.5%. This increased revenue through the legitimate sales of tea and effectively ended smuggling. Back in the early 17th century, ships carrying tea from the Far East to Britain could take over a year to bring their precious cargo home. The East India Company realised the need to cut the time of this journey. The Americans actually designed the first clippers, with the British close behind. These clippers were streamlined, tall-masted vessels that sped along at nearly 18 knots, nearly as fast as modern ocean liners. The most famous clipper ship is probably the Cutty Sark, built in 1868 in Dumbarton. The Cutty Sark only made the tea run eight times, but it was a remarkable ship for its era, and it's now on exhibition in Greenwich, London. Originally, the British not only imported tea, but also teapots. 
It was only by the middle of the 18th century that English craftsmen managed to make porcelain teapots. These teapots had beautiful designs over them, like the ones already being made in China. There was an outcry for teacups with handles to suit British habits, since tea in China was traditionally drunk from cups without handles. This meant a huge growth in the pottery and porcelain industry over the years, and the prosperity of such companies as Wedgwood, Spode and Royal Dalton. It is said that afternoon tea originated in the early 1800s, when dinner in fashionable circles might not be served until 8 o'clock at night. Anna Russell, 7th Duchess of Bedford, was a lady-in-waiting to Queen Victoria. She launched the idea of having tea in the late afternoon to bridge the gap between luncheon and dinner. A light meal of tea, usually Darjeeling, and cakes and sandwiches seemed to be the perfect balance for the Duchess. This evolved into high tea with the working classes and, over time, became the main meal of the day. Today, over 3 million tonnes of tea is produced every year worldwide. Britain is the second largest nation of tea drinkers per capita, drinking about 165 million cups of tea a day, or 62 billion cups per year. Ireland is the first. Over the years, tea has become a symbol of comfort and hospitality in the UK, earning its rightful place as Britain's favourite drink. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you've made it this far, then perhaps let us know what your favourite type of tea is. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And we'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye.